shepherds are the first to see the Lamb of God. There is so much meaning in that line right there. Jesus is called the Lamb of God, and he is also the great shepherd. So it seems only fitting that the shepherds would be the first to see the Lamb of God. As the star shone down brightly in that stable that night upon the Christ child, it was his star. I want you to think about that. In the scriptures, it doesn't just say a star. It says his star. This was a special star that was marked just for Jesus, just for the Christ child. And next week, we're going to look at this, but not everybody saw his star. Just a few that had their eyes open and were looking for it. That star shone brightly upon Jesus as his family gathered with him just that night and cuddled him. But it wasn't just Joseph and Mary. We don't know who all was there. It could have maybe been some of the people from the houses around. But God sent a special message. He had an announcement, and he didn't send it out in gold leaf to the emperors, to the rulers. He didn't let Herod know, or Caesar. He did not let the, the priests or the religious leaders know. No, in fact, he had a special announcement, and it was for the least likely. Jesus is born, Emmanuel, God with us. We sing the song every Christmas, O come, O come, Emmanuel. And what does that really mean? Emmanuel means God with us, abide with us, live with us. And that is exactly what God did. He sent down his son to live, to be one with us. Luke 2 said, while they were there in Bethlehem, the time came for Mary to give birth to her baby. Her first son was born, and she put claws around him and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. As we talked, the manger was not probably a wooden a wooden manger. They didn't have wood then. It would have been a stone, and it would have been hollowed out some translation says he was born in a feed trough where they feed cattle. But that doesn't make for as fun of a song to sing. The shepherds learn of the birth of Jesus. That is actually the title in the Bible, in Luke. I love that line. They learn. They learn. And how did they learn it? It says, now there were shepherds nearby keeping out in the field, keeping guard over their flock by night. That's what the sign... <coughs> of Judea looks like. The hills of the country. There's grass, but there's a lot of rock. It's not the rolling hills that we see here. It says, they were watching their flocks of sheep at night, and the angel Lord came down to them. The shining greatness of the Lord shone around them, and they were very much afraid. Suddenly a vast heavenly army appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace among people whom he is pleased. Put yourself in those shepherd's shoes. <laughs> You're out doing your normal daily, nightly duty of watching the sheep, keeping them from predators, trying to find grass for them to continue to eat so that way they're nice and healthy and they have good wool, wool so that way they can cut the wool. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, angels break forth and announce this news. They didn't know there was a coming Messiah. They didn't know what to do with this. They didn't get to go to church. They did not get to go to the temple because they were so lowly. They were the scum of the earth. They were the far outcast. They were un. Clean. It was about the lowest occupation you could possibly have outside of tending to swine. Tending to sheep was just one step up. So they didn't know the scriptures. 
They didn't know that probably a Messiah was going to be born unless maybe they had heard hearsay and, and rumblings about it. And all of a sudden, the heavens opened up. We can't even imagine what must have been going through their minds. But Gabriel says, do not be afraid. I can't help but think that those words came with an extra bonus from God of calming peace. Because if you just had an angel speak to you and he said, do not be afraid, do you think that changed your, your scared, <laughs> scaredness? No, probably not. There had to be an inner peace that came with that. Because then they had to listen carefully to what he's about to say. He says, listen carefully, for I proclaim to you the good news that brings great joy to all the people. Today, your Savior. Did you catch that? He said, your Savior is born in the city of David. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloths and lying in a manger. How many of you have ever really got that? Where he said, your Savior. Again, I'm talking about shepherds. I'm talking about the lowest of low. The ones who are not worthy of anything. And yet the angel is telling them, Jesus didn't come for just the priests. He didn't come for the religious leaders. He came for you. And then he gives them a sign. Another sign. Mary got a sign. Elizabeth got a sign. And now the shepherds got a sign. You will find him lying in a manger. When the angels left them, they went back to heaven. The shepherds said to one another, You know, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place that the Lord has made known to us. You notice they didn't say, wow, that was interesting. Go back to sleep. Or, who woke me up for that? No, they immediately obeyed and they go, let's go to Bethlehem. Now, again, this is huge because shepherds did not go into town. Again, they were considered unclean. We, we have, we've conjured up this picture because of the Christmas cards and the, and the movies and the stories of these cleanly clad men who were bowing before the major all squeaky clean and, and have this peace about them. This is a ragtag bunch of groups. They were right along with the, the tax collectors because people didn't trust them. <clears throat> See, shepherds would take their sheep and they had to graze them. And so they would just take them around and graze them on other people's property. And they had this, this reputation that if something came up missing, well, the shepherds probably took it, whether they did or not. Because they were looked at as thieves, as bandits, even though they may not have been. That's the, the persona that they had. That was the reputation. And yet God chose the lowest of low to announce the birth of his son. And with great haste, they obey. Now, I talked about the shepherds would not go into town. Did you ever stop to wonder, too, why maybe a stable? You know, I mentioned at Christmas Eve that the stable was a gift from God to Mary. It got her out of those little cramped houses. You saw those little holes in the hills that were their homes. These were small, and people were on top of one another because they had all gone to be registered in the city of David. I wouldn't want to be having a kid in those kind of circumstances. So God had provided a quiet, peaceful, private place for her to bear the child. But there was another reason, besides fulfilling the scriptures, where do you think those shepherds would be feel comfortable in going? Would they be comfortable walking down the streets of Bethlehem, banging on doors, trying to find out where this baby was that was born? Or would they feel more at home, walking into the outskirts of town, hearing the cry of a baby, 
in a cave, in a stable, away from the hubbub, away from the people who would look down on them. See, I think that when God was putting all these pieces together that we could not see ahead of time, he was thinking of every little detail. When God brings Christ to you, he brings him on a personal level. One that you can feel comfortable with. One that you are willing to come before and not have to worry about those around. The comments that will be made. Getting kicked out of town. Being told you're not worthy, you're not good enough, you shouldn't be here. No. God sent the missing piece down from heaven. To put that picture together to a chosen mother and a carpenter. I love this picture. If you've looked at, if you can see this picture well enough, it's actually a puzzle piece made out of wood. So two people who bore a child. It says in verse 16, so they hurried off and they located Mary and Joseph, and they found the baby lying in a manger, just as the angel had said. And they bowed down, and they worshipped him. As God continues to put the pieces of the puzzle together for a big picture, he lets us know that he sent his son for all of us, each and every one of us, from the highest to the lowest, there is no ranking in God's eyes. Jesus came so that way we might all have life and have it abundantly. As you go about the rest of your Christmas season, I want you to take a little time and I want you to ponder on the shepherds. Because I think you'll find that the more you think about the shepherds and the shepherd's life, the more you'll see yourself as a shepherd. Maybe as a wise man or as a religious ruler. And you'll maybe internalize a little more the feeling that those shepherds had that day when they realized that God saw them and they saw their plight. And he loved them so much that he gave them the same gift as he gives each and every one of us.